Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Monday, the 7th of November. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined this morning by, firstly, Joshua Barry up there in the, the top left corner. How are we doing, Joshua? Yeah, good, Derek. Good to see you. Me, me and Johnny spoke at length last night, so I'll leave the floor more to Stevie today, uh, this morning, but no, good to, good to be with you. Yeah, and I'm delighted to say we're also joined by uh, Rangers Review writer and Four Lads Had a Dream blogger, Stevie Clifford. Uh, I think I know how you're doing, Stevie, but uh, how, how are we doing on this uh, bright and breezy Monday morning? Yeah, school run done, dog walked. Um, it's quite miserable weather, which is quite apt. Um, yes. But good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is well. Yes. Um, right, folks, um, let's talk Rangers. Uh, unfortunately, so it was another... Dreadful performance yesterday as they fell to a 2-1 defeat in Perth to St. Johnston. They are now seven points behind uh, leader Celtic at the top of the Scottish Premiership table. Pressure mounting on Giovanni van Bronckhorst. Um, it's, uh, it was, uh, yeah, was not many positives to take out the match. Joshua was at McDermott Park for us. Um, we had a, an hour-long show with the uh, Johnny McFarlane afterwards. You can go and check that out on our YouTube channel, folks. But I'm interested to get your point of view, Stevie. Now, I know we were on after the Liverpool match where you were calling for managerial change and, and director of football change. I can't imagine those views have changed after what you witnessed yesterday. No, they haven't. Um, I mean, <clears throat> I've been quite outspoken on it in terms of what I would like to happen. Um, I appreciate that other people maybe don't share the same views, um, but my position hasn't changed. In fact, it's, it's intensified in terms of where we are. Change is needed. It's needed quickly. Um, the longer that the board put it off or, or don't do you know, what the fans are now responding to um, is, is just... It's putting it off. It's kicking the can down the road. We all know where this is going to end up, I'm afraid. Um, yesterday only intensifies that. There was only so long. We all spoke about the fact that, that performance is only so long that the results would keep coming when they were performing like that. We spoke after Aberdeen and said that cannot be an anomaly in terms of the performance. They now have hit a barrier. They need to reach that, etc. You know, yesterday was 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 a shambles from, from the word go. They may have started well in terms of pressure, but we all know, like Johnny done a really good piece yesterday on the website, which I'd urge everybody to go and check out in terms of Rangers pressure. And it, it might be pressure with the ball, etc. It might be pressure in terms of, you know, corners, but they're doing absolutely nothing with it. I think the XG, I think 4% of the time, you know, Johnny said that we're expected to score goals. So, you know, it's, it's all deceiving in terms of what they're actually doing. Joshua is obviously the man for the stats and things, and he'll be able to tell us better. But my overall point is, you know, that they are not hiding in plain sight. Some of them are, but in terms of what the output of what we're getting from this team under this manager, it's, it's completely neglectful. It, it's now past it, the, the time of, um, you know, him turning it around. And I appreciate, listen, I appreciate that my views are, are very very, you know, one-sided and very out there. But Rangers need change. Van Bronckhurst has to be removed. Ross Wilson has to be removed. And my position on that won't change. Um, and, you know, it, it remains that. And I just feel that the, the longer he's, he's kept in, what will happen is we'll maybe get a couple of good results, then we'll get a bad one, a couple of good results, then a bad one. There's not going to be any sustained form under this manager. There's not going to be any sustained um, run under this manager. He can't do it. The squad can't perform under him. And he's been unlucky. Look, he's had a lot of injuries. He's had a lot to contend with. I think the signings and, the, and, and what he's been dealt with is atrocious. Um, he's been given zero help on that front. And, and it is what it is. Um, I feel sorry for him as well in terms of the fact that he, he's had that to deal with. And he's a lovely guy. Yeah. But I've no room for sentiment, Derek. I'm afraid it, it's time for change. Yeah, and listen, he 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 knows he's been in the game long enough. Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, he'll understand it's a results-driven business, and at the moment, he's not getting results. Joshua, what do you make of his point? Uh, Ross Wilson, um, I think time for him to shoulder some of the blame, perhaps. And I mean, usually there's a manager who 
uh, carries a can, Joshua, when, when the team underperforms. But uh, a lot of supporters venting frustration at, at Ross Wilson uh, as well. Is that, uh, the Rangers need a, a rip up and start again job? Um, well, I'm going to just link in the the description the piece that Stevie references by Johnny, which is which is excellent. I'd really recommend it. Um, maybe arguing why it hasn't worked on Devan Broncos domestically, and and I've also written a piece about kind of the the point that you're both referring to, which is why um, the title's something along the lines of there isn't much to hold on to. There's, there's nothing to hold on to, and that's the point. Um, you know, take take the argument about Rangers having twenty nine shots yesterday that, that that Stevie refers to. Um, now, what Johnny's speaking about there in his tweet is that on the basis of expected goals per chance. So, for Rangers take twenty nine shots, what's the the average ex- expectation that that shot will end in a goal based on the value of the chance was um, zero point zero six in the end, so six percent. But that's the second lowest in the league over the entire weekend. Um, what's that? What that? Shows is that yes, Rangers might have had 29 shots. I think 11 of those were blocked. I think 17 of them were from um, uh, seven, uh, 12 yards or more. So this isn't as if Rangers have totaled up what they did against Aberdeen and expected goals of, of over six, and they really have deserved to go and win that game by a heavy margin. Yes, you can argue from Van Bronco's point of view that Rangers probably had 12 attempts before St Johnston even scored their opening goal before they even made it into the penalty box. Um, and yes, you can argue that on another day, Rangers maybe take advantage of one of those set pieces. But the point is, they didn't. Uh, you know, Motherwell away, that could have been a performance that dropped points because I think it was it, it lacked so many basics. And, and Rangers, I think their expected goals on that day was, was 0.8. This is probably an example, in my opinion, of performances catching up when the margins are so thin between the chances that you're creating um, and you're conceding. So that, that that's the main point, I think, at the moment. It's difficult for Van Broncos to say... Look at the style of play and um, look at the continuity and selection or the number of players that are overperforming. Look at the bad luck we've had. Yes, injuries come into it. And and, and yes, I think that the numbers show that Rangers could win that game on another day. But also, I don't think they really did deserve to win it. Another point that Johnny made last night was St. Johnston were in a way in control against the ball at points. They were happy for Rangers to have the ball in, in certain um, areas, I think. And after the first 20 minutes, when they did manage to play through a fair a few number of times in Tillman and and Lundstrom got on the ball in the centre. They didn't do that for the entire second half. And I think when you're restricted to shots from distance as your only real opportunity of getting a goal, which is what happened with Lundstrom and Tavernier, that speaks to a lack of um, real attack and rhythm against these set defences that, again, Johnny speaks about in, in these pieces. So I'll link them in the description, Derek, and uh, you'd urge people to especially go and read Johnny's because I think it's a really uh, excellent piece. Yeah, uh, what do you make of this point, Stevie, uh, from Scott? Hi, Scott. Uh, it's time for Jill to go, but the players have to take a, a hard look at themselves. I can't disagree with, with much of that. Now, I wanted to tie in with this point made by uh, the gallant pioneer. Uh, I was grimacing when I watched this, Stevie. The video on social media of Lundstrom surrendering possession with a whimper is disturbing. Got to say, did not enjoy watching that whatsoever. Um, I mean, if you do that at seven aside, five aside, you get absolutely roasted. Um, what was going on there and how much do the players need to shoulder the blame for what's been going on here? Well, we talk a lot about, and I've, I've been criticised before, about using buzzwords, buzzwords like heart and desire, which sometimes, you know, fans hide behind or, you know, we use it to simplify things. But, you know, you look at what Lundstrom done yesterday, you look at the effort of the players, it's, it's all half-hearted, it's all, you know, it's all within... I don't know, within the, the small boundaries that they've created, nobody wants to be expansive. Nobody wants to take control of a game. Nobody wants to really put their stamp on it and try and affect it and things like that. And it's just, you know, Lundstrom, Lundstrom yesterday, John Lundstrom frustrates me because he can be wonderful one match and then absolutely done the next. And, you know, that, what Lundstrom did do yesterday, April's right, you know, it summed us up completely. Can I go slightly back to the Ross Wilson point? Joshua, you know, yeah, was asked about it. People have said to me, you know, why have you got such a bee in your bonnet under Ross Wilson and, and you know, this and that, etc. Ross Wilson's brought in 26 players. Of those 26 players, I think half a dozen have maybe been classed as, as being a success. People have then argued that in this market, you know, the market that he's dealing in, that, um, you know, there isn't many successes to get and he's done well in terms of that. Well, I, I look across the city and they're dealing in the same market. 
and their success rate is almost, you know, spot on. We can't get players apparently for 1.8 million and things, guys like Matondo. What do you expect when you pay that much? Well, they got Matt O'Reilly for one and a half million from the English, you know, first division, I think, and and he's been touted to go for 15, 16 million. This is our project of buy low, sell big. Who's going to be the next one we're selling big? Yeah. Ross Wilson has not, um, he's he's not, what's the word? He's not affected the positions that we've needed. We've been crying out for midfield resources for years. Stephen Gerrard talked about it in 2019 that our midfield needed bolstered. We're now in 2022 with the same players. You know, um, he's he's not he, he's signing players that we, we don't need for money that that's 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 wildly too big, um, and the squad's bloated. It's it's unbalanced. The wages are too high for the output we're getting, and and this squad, you know, it's full of players that are injury pro, injury prone. There's I think ten out of contract or or contract loans up next summer. There's a massive rebuild, which we will, we were told would never happen again. Um, there's guys that don't want to be there, that moves have been blocked, going like Kamara, who clearly, you know, clearly in a Rangers shirt is, is not interested. Other guys like Alfredo, Ryan Kent, look, look completely disheartened. So, yeah, I mean, we look at, we look at the, the players, and we quite rightly should, and the boys right in terms of criticism of the players, but this squad should have been ripped up 18 months ago, a year ago, yeah, in the summer minimum, and we're still he's kicked it the can so far down the road that it's now at the point where this was predictable. Everybody knew we spoke about it in the summer when we renewed the um, Davis, Arfield, and McGregor's um, contracts. And we were all worried it was going to get to this point. Why are we doing this? You know, is this a sign of where we are, etc.? It's a sign of completely bad planning in terms of what we are now. I'm not going to criticize Arfield or Davis in terms of the service or what they brought, but it's clear to everyone that we're relying on Scott Arfield yesterday to come on and make a difference when he can't. And, yeah. and you know, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I've, I've put my position out there on Ross Wilson completely, and people will say to me, oh, you know, we're doing good things, and he's made big sales and stuff like that, and he has, and, and credit to him for that, absolutely. But one, you know, big sale on the back of somebody else's signings, etc., doesn't pull the wool over my eyes. His job is recruitment and getting a squad in a position, maximising our values, making sales, etc. Where is the squad value now, Derek? Yeah. Like it, it's non-existent. We're we're about to lose some of our biggest assets for free. Others are sitting, you know, with no intention of playing for this club, apparently injured and getting too much every week for it. So. Ross Wilson's got a, a, a hell of a, a lot of explaining to do in terms of where we are. He's also the man that appointed Van Bronckhurst and he, and he lauded himself for it last year. I asked Stuart Robertson the question at the press conference and it was all down to, to Ross Wilson. So if we're now a year on and that manager has failed, then we should be looking directly at his position. Uh, Joshua, what do you make of the point that the one that Stevie mentioned there is, is one that sets alarm bells off for me? Um, Patterson, Aribo, and Bassi were sold last season for big money, but I'm struggling to think who with that conveyor belt. I think it's pretty much uh, stopped at the moment. Not just that, uh, what Giovanni Van Bronckhorst said on Friday with regards to potential squad rebuilds needing maybe 10 new players uh, in the summertime with players out of contract and uh, loans and what have you. It's worrying times how where this uh, this uh, rebuild's going to uh, happen, how this rebuild is going to happen with no saleable assets, as the comments have been suggesting. Yeah, um, it's obviously something that's been rumbling on the background for a while, and it's something that results dictate, Derek, because you're, you cast your mind back to Eindhoven against PSV and you know, as a side, PSV beat Ajax away from home last night, which I just think is, a, you know, another interesting point in the, in the discussion of saying that Rangers can't compete at Champions League level. Yes, the, the level is, is high, but I think it shows what everyone has been saying, that Rangers also underperformed on their own performance in that group stage, especially when you look at how they went and beat PSV um, away from home. You remember Morelos after that game, uh, I think his social media post was, this is my team something along those lines um, and if results are, are good if Glenn Kamara continues his performance from that night when he was excellent in the first half over nine Tobin Frank Kent's able to improve his form um, maybe they sign new deals maybe Rangers can get some money for them but when it 
the results go bad as we continue to say. I think it just exposes everything or it makes everything seem a lot um, worse uh, at the moment. And yeah, I totally agree because Ryan Jack, Stephen Davis, Scott Arfield, uh, Alan McGregor, Hellander, you know, none of these players are going to sign new contracts or, you know, none of these players think definitely aren't the answer next season. And of course, players like Arfield and Davis are almost, and Jack almost excluded from the conversation because players that have served the club so well deserve um, credit for that. But you also have to, you know, speak about it realistically and think that you can't be sentimental. You have to look to the future and think what is going to bring success, obviously, if, if you're uh, in charge of that department at a football club. Morelos and Ken, uh, Kamara, totally agree, you know, just it was just over a year ago that he signed that contract that was so celebrated because of how good he'd been um, under Gerard. So it's a very difficult situation and I think these next two windows hold such significance for Rangers because they obviously need to get it right. Um, and it's similar to the discussion about, I think, Rangers learning from the Champions League, how many of that squad will be you know, around the next season to, to have learned those lessons. Um, yeah. and, and I think that's probably what comes into the one of the difficulties for Van Bronckhorst, Derek, is the fact that, you know, this isn't a young team that was totally overhauled this summer. Um, and if that was the case, then I think you could argue the case that, OK, well, this might improve the second half of the season. Maybe you just need a couple more players. But because it's the same spine of the squad that has been through these difficulties before, that's been through these difficult results, then I think that scar tissue is very easily to, easy to relate over um, to, to the here and now because, um, yeah, because as I say, there's just so many players within that squad that have been here for a number of years. So everything needs refreshed at, at some stage. And um, yeah, I don't think you could argue with the case that there definitely should have been a bit more refreshing done this summer. Yeah, can, but... I just ask, can I just ask you both a question? Yes. When Van Bronckhurst came out and said that Rangers can't compete and, and they weren't good enough for Champions League level, the overall form and performances since then, how many times have we played well? How many good results have we had? And and what's been the, the overall impact from that? Because for me, as soon One... as he came out and said that, the, the, the fall off the cliff has been catastrophic. Yeah. Throughout, not just Champions League, I mean throughout everything. Well, it's an interesting point because a point made here from Andy, uh, he says, uh, morning Bears, hope we're all well. PSV beating Ajax away to round off a Sunday to forget. Um, the the drop-off since that PSV result, Stevie, has been quite remarkable. You even see the likes of them beating Arsenal, Union, of course, uh, qualifying from their Europa League group. Um, and and uh, like you say, that comment he made after Ajax, I don't think he helped himself with that. Uh, and it was always one of those that could backfire domestically, as we have seen in the league, Livingston and St. Johnston um, recently as well. So, um, yeah, uh, you're right there. I think Aberdeen sticks out as a, the outlier, that a good performance. We could say that was much more the Rangers that, that, were, that we're used to seeing. But, yes, yeah, it's, it's, the, the performances have been dreadful and results have caught up with them. Let's get to some of the comments coming in here, folks. Um, just a point here uh, from William, just uh, going slightly uh, off piece. He says, uh, well done to the women's team reaching the, the final yesterday, Sky Sports uh, Cup final, uh, that was a proper Rangers performance, beating Spartans by four goals to nil. Uh, I think play Hibs in, in, in the final. So, uh, yeah, congratulations to Malky Thompson and uh, the, the women's team there. Um, some other uh, comments come in. Gareth Williams says, uh, Gio gave us some of our greatest ever moments as a player and we should never turn on him, turn on the lack of investment. Uh, and this is an interesting one, Josh. I wanted to get your take on this. Uh, Katic Loyal 72 says, uh, what do you guys think of the confrontation between Tav and the fans, you were uh, at, in Perth for us yesterday. Did you notice this at all? Um, I'll just read you what, what was said. Um, it's a social media clip or online, folks. Uh, uh, a section of uh, fans can be heard calling, uh, shouting over to Tavnir, saying, one player came and applauded the fans. Week after week, we support you. Money after money, mate. Every single player was in the tunnel apart from one. Come and applaud us and appreciate us. You play for Rangers Football Club. Don't walk in the tunnel, man. Come and applaud us and appreciate us. One player done it, Cholak. Uh, he has been here less than a season and he understands it more. Um, so, yeah, what, what do you make of that? Uh, those scenes like yesterday after the game? Yeah, I was, I was still inside the, the stadium at that point, but obviously seeing the clip, um, you can understand fans' frustration. I think that's the main point, absolutely. Um, particularly when I, I think you know there was booze, audible booze at full time yesterday, as was the case at home to Dundee and, and, and Livingston. Um, and, and there's a, 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 understandably a lot of frustration. Equally, um, you can understand when players probably are just um, almost a little bit uh, embarrassed to go and um, 
you know, look at the fans after after losing again. But I think it's a you, you almost always need to do that. It seems as, as though that's kind of a, an unwritten rule in football. And um, Tavernier did. Uh, I remember after the Ajax game, kind of try and lead the players around the pitch, you know, um, to say thanks to the remaining fans that were there after the defeat against Ajax. Um, but yeah, it was it was. It was hostile uh, at the end of the game yesterday, but I think just frustrated because, again, to go back just three months, that game against Ajax away, um, Van Bronckhorst, his big thing has always been the ability at Ibrox to get big results. Obviously, going back to Europe last season, he seemed to have learned in old firm games by the end of last season to, to obviously win that semi-final and, and end the Scottish Cup with a wait for a Scottish Cup. Um, and then he seemed to be able to churn out results in the league even when... The performances weren't great. I was thinking yesterday of the game against Dundee where Conor Goldson scores that late winner last season and how you know turgid or the home win against Aberdeen when Kima Roof shins the ball in uh, to the back of the net. You know, how many games there were that you thought this isn't great, but they're getting through it and they're winning. Um, and is that not a good sign? Uh, but I think you, the, the fact that so dramatically he has lost that ability in big games, as Stevie says, the, the belief clearly isn't there. I think you could see that um, against Ajax. And it's been such a chastening uh, group stage when you throw that into the mix as well as the results kind of dry up, that's why I think you're in the situation you are at the moment, obviously combined with the, the squad issues that, um, that we've already discussed. Yeah, what do you make of this yeah, point? Would, yeah, can, sorry, yeah, when you go, when you go, Stevie. Sorry to butt in again, Derek. See, see with regards to the fans making that point yesterday, I applaud that the fans are there every single week. The Union Bear boys um, that, that kind of led that are there every single week. They're the ones that lead the atmosphere. They're the ones that make the noise. They're the one that travel absolutely everywhere. If they've got points to make, they should make them. And I've seen people say, you know, you know, it's it's it gives ammunition to others. You know, if Rangers fans want to affect change, this is the way to do it. Um, I'm not calling for you know front door protests and things like that. But um, fans are frustrated. They're quite entitled to make their positions clear. At least James Tavernier stood there and uh, listened, and at least you know. I get the fact that it's difficult for him and he can't really say much. He's a captain. At least he fronted up. The manager and everybody else walked on with their heads down. So the guys are quite entitled to make the point. There wasn't abuse. There wasn't bad language. It wasn't anything he's got a point to make and he's make it and he's made it. So he's quite entitled to do that, Derek. I, I don't have yeah, any yeah. issue with that. And, you know, this is this is the issue that, that we, we've got at the moment. This is only going to go one way and it's going to get more toxic and it's going to get more protests and, and things are, are going yeah. to dramatically go that way. The fans have got a right to, to vent their frustration, especially when they see what they see on the park. So I've got no issue with it, no issue with the fans doing that at all. And, you know, we've seen how it, fan power is, is massive. So they pay their money, they travel everywhere, they've got nothing but respect for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like you say, Steve, that was what I was going to put that question to you. I mean, what we've seen at McDermott Park, I think we, there's a there's a likelihood we may see that more often if the, the situation uh, continues uh, as it is. Uh, Josh, the, the point is, I think the players look like they, they don't have belief in the manager and more and more supporters, I think you'll struggle to find any uh, that, that has belief that, that Gio can turn this around um i've i don't have much hope we can do it and i think that 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 tells a story that it's 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 now time for uh a change at the helm um will a new manager get 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 a tune out of these players who knows um usually you get a a, a bounce when a manager leaves his job um however it remains to be seen. Do you think, uh, can, can you foresee a change happening before what is two big, well, huge games coming up against Hearts, of course, on Wednesday and, and St Mirren at the weekend? Obviously, none of us uh, know that. Uh, do they you can only go off um, what actually happens? Um, two huge games, you're right, Derek, but I think if I, seven points behind, if, if things remain as they are, can you see Rangers not dropping any more points and making up that yeah. uh, seven-point gap? I think that's the difficulty and you know, to, to borrow another argument from from a point that we've already made, they needed performances as well as as well as results up until the World Cup break, and they've ended up uh, almost getting neither. Aberdeen seems to be an outlier, and they did start better than than most twelve o'clock away games yesterday. But again, you're you, you're kind of scraping the barrel to 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 put across the the opposing um, side of you. So a very difficult situation. A lot of players out of form as well. And that obviously comes into it 
where does the responsibility lie from that between player and manager? I guess it's it's hard to know that as well. But you look at you know Kent, Kamara, and, and Morelos. Remember that goal they scored against Antwerp two seasons ago. Oh, it um, seems like a lifetime ago now. Yeah, yeah. But you know that, that it's such an important point as well because you look at how far away they are from from their levels and and how much that comes into a conversation. I guess so. You know, a, a really difficult situation for. Uh, for everyone at the moment, I agree with Stevie that supporters are completely justified in venting their frustration, especially when a number of them will have travelled away to um, all ends of Europe uh, this season and seen some, you know, pretty humiliating results, um, uh, as well as that, as well as obviously the old firm um, before all of that. And the confidence since since then has seemed to to really drain out of this team. So I think the best case situation for Rangers at the start of this week um, was that they got through these uh, through these these three games. Sorry. And there was time to, to work on things, maybe bring in players. They need to have players, a few players lined up in the January transfer window. I don't think that's um, a discussion. But obviously this result yesterday um, naturally attracts so much criticism because as well as being 17 points behind, however many goals behind, it's just hard to see how this process eventually you know, turns into anything yeah. successful at the moment. Yeah, lots of comments coming on the potential uh, replacements. Uh, should uh, the, the manager be, be replaced? It? Andrew Webster gets in touch. Terry, you're a Bolton man. Get Big Sam in. Game changer. Would not be opposed to that whatsoever. Uh, Big Sam Allardyce, he knows how to get a, a team organised. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, some left field comments coming in. Grant says, I'd like to see Bielsa or Duncan Ferguson. Don't know how likely that is, though. Uh, and uh, Scott Swelder says, sign Ant Middleton as full-time fitness coach. Um, this, I wanted to get your thoughts on this, Stevie. I asked Van Bronckhorst this, I think, uh, not last week, but the week before. Uh, there have been uh, accusations that the team is nowhere near as fit as what they were last season. Uh, and he cited the fact that the Champions League schedule is more intense than Europa League. They're getting impact injuries as opposed to uh, muscle injuries. Although Sakala picked up a hamstring injury yesterday. He's going to be out for some time. Um, and he also says, yeah, the, the, the close proximity to games, it's not just Rangers that are picking up injuries, it's other clubs. But in terms of fitness, that is one area that is uh, severely uh, lacking at the moment, isn't it? They don't look anywhere near as fit as what they did uh, previously. No, they don't. And everybody can see it. As for Van Bronckers, it's just waffle, basically. Um I don't, I don't, you know, everybody can see it in terms of what they built up last year and, and where they are now. And, and it was the same intense European schedule last season. Um, and you can see the Champions League is different, etc. The Champions League is different in terms of quality. But, you know, um, it's not like we've been, you know, bursting ourselves in these games. I've seen teams run four, five, six kilometres more than we have. Yeah, so it's a mental thing in terms of where the where the squad is, but they're not fit. And you know, at, at what at what point do I do I, do I stop saying things? Because I I have lost yeah. faith in this management yeah. team. So with regards to whatever he says, and with regards to fitness and things like that, I don't believe it because my eyes don't lie, and neither does others. So the fitness is awful, you know, um, and. I can't defend it. Look, Daddy, yeah. I, mean, I don't know what to say in terms of that. Like, I don't no, trust him. Uh, I don't. I know what I'm seeing on the pitch, so it's not good enough. But it's not yeah, good yeah. enough throughout. It's not just fitness. It's you know, this is where we are in terms of of the, of this this team and, and this management. And you know, it's not solely on him. It's not solely on Ross Wilson. It's not solely on the yeah. players. It's on all of them. And um, you know, I've got no desire to sit here and defend any of them. If they all went tomorrow. I'd be quite happy, but it's bigger than that. You know, there's boardroom things that, that need to be addressed. Um, and, and you know, there's there's a lot of unhappiness between the club and the fans. And that's yeah. what happens when when it's it's been six, seven, eight months of, of complete silence towards where we are now. So a lot of things need to change with Rangers with regards to um, not only the manager, but bigger than that. Yeah. Uh, Josh, I want to get your point on this. There will be a... Uh, you might not want to read it right enough, folks, but um, we'll, we'll consult the stats bomb data today and get get the analysis up on the website uh, at some point uh, later. John Payton makes a point. Uh, we had a dodecahedron of corners yesterday, not one header on one. Set pieces are an abomination, Joshua. What is going on with Rangers set pieces? They don't look like um, they're, they're practised. doesn't look like much... 
is spent in terms of uh, creating different set <laughs> plays, uh, mixing things up. And it's not the first time, of course, we've said this for some time now. What's going on with it, the set plays? The con- I've lost count the amount of corners they had yesterday. Um, but not just that, free kicks, aimless balls into the box that, that are easily defendable. Yeah, and I think what's really important within this whole uh, you know podcast this morning is that for all the criticism that you know the manager will rightly deserve because he is the manager, you get the, the good bits and the bad bits of being a manager. The players obviously need to take a lot of responsibility for that as well. You know things like Lundstrom at the first goal um, and, and and the the repetitive outswingers of corners, not even kind of changing it up. So I think it's important to. You know, share, share the criticism around, if you will. Um, we're going to look at that on the website today, Derek. Look at the corners, which we've spoken about uh, before. I did an article about it maybe two months ago um, when I was saying, um, I, I, you know, after a similar discussion on a briefing, people were saying what's happening with the corners and the numbers were a lot less complimentary than previous seasons. Just the top line, Rangers scored from 15 corners last season in the league. So a huge, you know, contributor of goals um, and some important moments. Uh, to you know, to go back to an example of the game, um, the Dundee game, I think it was Ramsey or someone scored from a corner to make it one-one before what was a big win in the title race at that time. Um, if if Rangers score from a corner yesterday, it could be an entirely different game. But you're right, they don't look threatening at all, apart from Tavernier scoring from that. Um, you know, the, the rebound, whether you count that or not, it's not from a corner routine. Yeah. So we'll look at that. We'll look at um, you know th- this argument around shots, why the shot call it was so bad, um, uh, and amongst other things. So yeah, you can scri- subscribe to the website, just one pound for two months, support our work, and we'll be looking at everything from um, the manager situation, as we already have, um, and, and general direction to individual performances, because I think that is just as important to look at. Um, players obviously need to take responsibility for the situation they find themselves in as well. So um yeah, subscribe um and follow us on on socials and you'll you'll get all that on your on your phone. Yeah, this uh, this uh, lad points out is the Sakala did uh, have a couple of chances from corners, but uh, the, the conversion rate is uh, nowhere near good enough right. uh, for a club like Rangers TV. Uh, you're sort of you're banging your head against a wall really. This uh, we've seen this movie before in terms of Lumping balls into the box. Livingston was a, a recent example as well. Um, they just need to change it up. You're, you're scratching your head as to figuring out what goes on in terms of on the training ground to, to, to keep the opposition guessing. It doesn't, on their, using the eye test, it doesn't look like much goes on. No, well, it doesn't. And, you know, I've been, I've been critical, you know, for, for months and it's got me criticism because I've been saying to people, there's no tactical plan to this. I don't yeah. see anything that the manager's trying to do. And, and this team will revert very quickly back into just throwing balls into the box. There's there's no mixing it up. There's no um, there's there's no difference in, in how we attack. The corners are ridiculously poor in regards to not only the movement. I remember we used to float it to the front, uh, the, the front post and it'd be flicked on you know, either in the net or flicked on and stuff like that, you know, yeah. even the basics are going. But listen, I want to ask you again something yesterday. Joshua is probably the man to direct this to in terms of tactically and what he's doing. But this is this is where I am with Van Bronckhurst. I don't in the understand in the slightest what he was trying to do. 60 minutes, he makes, um, off comes Ben Davis, um, on goes Arfield, on goes Morelos. He leaves one at the back, Leon King in the centre, all on his own. He's got two fullbacks, which he, he he must tell to tuck in. They don't tuck in. They're still bombing forward. Leon King gets dragged out. You know, literally two minutes later, he gets dragged out and turned at the corner flag. The ball's whipped across. Nicky Clark is all alone making that run across, and Barisic can't get near him. On 60 minutes, to make such a change like that, you make that in the last five, ten minutes when you really have to throw and go for everything. We were 1-0 down at that point. We could score at any point. You know, we can argue how likely it is. But to be so tactically naive and to allow a team that are playing two up top, remember, in Stevie May and Nicky Clark, that space, that isn't a gamble in terms of, you know, worth taking at that point in the game. It's just two minutes it took for them to capitalise on that. And then he kind of moved Sands and Lundstrom back. It's, it's too late. So if anyone can tell me tactically Giovanni Van Bronckhurst knows what he's doing uh, and knows how to change games and knows how to set up and, and there is a tactical plan there that the players players are following, please tell me and I will quite happily say, oh, well, I'm sorry, I've been tough on him. 
but I don't see it. And that yesterday, those substitutions within two minutes cost Rangers a game. And it's what I see constantly under a man that doesn't have a clue what he's doing. Sorry, Derek, I thought you were going to jump in there. Um, I think it's a situation where he's, you know, if he doesn't change stuff, you probably, and and Rangers lose 1 0, you you maybe say, well, he should have changed things earlier. Um, I agree. I, I think it was just almost last chance saloon. I think Van Bronckhorst would have known the criticism that was going to follow um, if defeat did happen and wanted to get his, probably as many attacking players on the, the pitch as possible. I, th- I think he does have a, a template. I just don't think it's, it's working. Um, and I think one of the issues within that is that it's changed so much. Um, you know, you look at Lundstrom high up the pitch yesterday, I thought, as I say, his energy in the first 20 minutes, you could see the benefit of it there, but he's obviously been at the base of midfield all season and, and Sand has kind of been out of the picture um, for a number of, of games. Kamara is now out of the picture. So I, I just think lack of continuity is, is difficult. And I do agree again with, with Johnny's point in that piece that I've, I've mentioned a few times, which is in the, the description. Um, because I don't think Rangers are, because I think Van Bronckhorst's philosophy is to adapt to the opposition, which we've seen time and time again, which I think is why Rangers were so successful on the, the road to Seville last season, when I think it, they are just tasked with breaking a team down, which is maybe 70-80% of, of their domestic games. They don't always have the the rhythms and, and routines that you see all top teams kind of play in now um, to go and break teams down and create chances when you have to obviously create space before you do go and um, create a chance, which I think is why you, you've often seen them resort to crosses and um, kind of familiar patterns that this team have fallen into and in recent years so yeah but it was i think it was one minute that that happened um van bronkhorst kind of was very critical of the defending after that goal i've not got the quote to hand but i I'd need to watch it back but i think um it may be a situation of barisic is then have to tuck in and, and go on the striker when he's not had to do that for the full game and it's just these split seconds that maybe allow Kristen Johnson forward, I think it was Stevie May to, to get ahead of him, or, or Nicky Clark maybe it was, um, to get ahead of him and, and, and finish. So, um, yeah, it didn't pay off at all. And and from that point, although Rangers hit the bar, um, they didn't really open St. Johnson up at all, did they? Um, no. And if you resort, if, if the only opportunity of you getting back into the game is Lundstrom and Tavern, you're just hitting it with all the force they have from the edge, edge of the box again to go back to a point we've made already. I don't think that speaks in going terms about the the attack in football because Rangers did have enough time theoretically to go and score the goals they needed to but I feel like that whole second half was played almost with an anxiety that 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 meant that it never really looked likely that they were going to get back into the game yeah yeah I totally agree um okay folks I think we'll call time there uh it's been a tough one to record uh this morning um no wonder after another Really poor Rangers display and result uh, on Sunday. Um, just a reminder, you can see a little ticker below. Um, we've got that fantastic offer on the site just now. Just a pound for two months worth of coverage. We're practically giving it away. So much content on there at the moment. Um, it's well worth it. Head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. Um, we'll be back again tomorrow uh, unless uh, anything happens uh, before then. Um, but uh, lots of stuff on the website just now. As I mentioned earlier on, there's a, a tactical breakdown coming your way. Whether you want to read that or not uh, <laughs> remains to be seen. Um, but yeah, uh, if you don't see us until then, we'll be back tomorrow morning uh, looking ahead to uh, Harps on Wednesday night. Uh, but until then, 